Okay, let's talk about the OpenReach DT Mark IV Master Socket 5C. Okay, so what you have here is you have an inlet from an RJ11 which feeds the router. If you take a look at the picture, you'll see a picture of the router. On the other side, you have a telephone port. It's the box standard conventional telephone port that goes in there. Okay, looking on the back, you have all the connections and you have a means of separating this box. So there's a lug just there on one side near the bottom and there's a lug just there on the other side of the bottom. So you squeeze the two lugs together, give it a bit of a wiggle and it pulls apart. So I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to look at this first piece here with the open reach BT logo on the top. So what you have on the back is you have your main feed coming in. So if you can imagine, I'll just show you now, just bear with me. I have a back box here. So this back box is just a back box I've got. Don't worry about the Ryan, that's just old Ryan. So there's a there's an entry port at the bottom of the back box, and there's a couple, well, there's a couple on one side, and there's another one on the other side, and I think there yeah, there'd be one at the top. So that would fit on your wall, like so. You'd have your screws going into the wall. Uh, so imagine that was in there. You'd have a piece of cable coming up through there. You'd strip it back, and then you'll have wires coming through on the other side. So they would go through like that on the other side. So it'd be something like that. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, put that to one side now. So now you'd have this ready to be terminated. So let's imagine that these two wires are going through the back box. Um, this is very old cabling that BT used to use a long time ago, in the good old days of the 80s. So you've got blue on one side and you've got an orange on the other side. Now what you do, I'm just going to snip those to the right length. So just cut them away, put them out of the way. So it's coming through the back box. And you'll see, just here, there's an, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but if I get the light just right, one side's got A and one side's got B. Now this is just a little clip that you lift up like so, and it's on a, it's on a hinge, okay? And then you'll have, so the A in the good old days of the 80s was the orange. So the orange would go in the A. What you've got to do with this is you've got to make sure it goes right the way to the back. And the blue was the B. You've got to make sure. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you've got to make sure they go in the holes that are right at the back. So you've just got to make sure you get this just right. Just right. Just right. So just straighten them out a little bit. It's a bit awkward, but a bit of patience. You'll soon have it there. So you push those in there like so, and then you'll see them. Can you see that if I hold it up, you see them right at the back, yeah? Push them right up, and then you clip down hard. Clip down, give it a pull test. They're not coming out. So now that is connected from the outside coming into the property. Okay. On the other side, if I hold this up close, you'll see some numbers on two, three, and five. Well, the only two numbers that we're bothered about are on the left and the right. It doesn't matter about the middle one at the present. So two is the B, which is the blue, and five is the orange. Now then, the two represents the B leg, and the five represents the A leg of a pair. So again, it's on a clip. On a, on a hinge, you lift the clip, quite stiff actually, lift the clip and you'll see three little holes. And like I said, on the left looking at this is five, which is the A leg. And on the far right is two, which is the B leg. So again, I'm going to use the same piece of cable. So I'm just going to take this out. And this is around the front. This is if you was doing extension cabling. I'm just going to put that down for a moment. I have to recut these now because it's always better to recut. Because if I hold this close, I don't know if you'll see it, you probably won't actually. But it does 
cut into the sheathing. So I'm going to go past that sheathing so I can redo this. Now then, so you, you spray the wires out. Your left is your orange, your blue is your... It's a, so your left is five orange, blue is two. The B leg. So just to recap. Hang on. Two is on the right, five is on the left, three is in the middle. So you get that like that. And again, you need to just jiggle, jiggle them about a bit. It's a bit difficult when it's all connected to the, see so these, these need slightly bend because they're going slightly outwards. It's hard to find a hole at the back. So just bring them, sort of bend them in a little bit, like that, so they're quite straight, like that. So when they do go through, they'll get the back holes. I don't know if you can see the back holes in this. I'm not sure if you can, you probably can't. You'll probably see it better when I get this in. There you go, and then just give it a wiggle. Uh, I'll probably do one at a time actually, that, that blue's gone, that blue's gone through, no, they, they're, they're very tricky, blue's in, and the orange is in, no, not quite, and you'll see the little holes, there's three little holes at the back, and you'll know when the cable's gone through, because they'll, uh, they'll go through there like that. So we've got the blue in, the blue is done, but you've got to do it all at the same time. So, let's have a play with the orange, so the orange... It's quite fiddly. A bit of perseverance. There you go. The orange is in as well now. Yeah. So then you just... What you need to do now is hold them out the base with your thumb. Making sure that's all the way through. And then crimp down. And it's quite quite a push. You've got to push it quite hard. All right, so that's well in. And then I always like to... Like I said, do the pull test. They're not going anywhere. So that is your extension cable in now connected so if you can imagine on the back you'll have your wire going into the back what i showed you at the beginning and then at the front any extension cabling going around the property you'll have those uh, terminated now into this front plate the actual free is if you had old phones uh, in the day you used to have to run a bell wire so you would have a, a bell wire running through the house, connecting all your extensions up. Don't need to do that now, really. Most phones now, unless you've got an old phone, they have um, ring capacitors built into, into the phones. And also, um, if you've got some dangly filters hanging about, which you don't need with this, by the way, but if you did have, they've got ring capacitors in as well, but you don't need that with this filter plate. So the free, you only need to wire the three up if you're doing a bell circuit. But nine times out of ten, it's only a two-wire circuit you need to be worrying about to run your uh, phones. And this also runs the internet as well. This back, this back termination is for your internet as well. So this is your main incoming on the back, A and B. And uh, your extensions are on the front. Right, so that's that bit done. So now you would have a back box on the wall like so. And you would have this ready to be connected to that. And all you do is you put the two together. Obviously, that will be screwed on the wall. And then you'll have a screw going through there and a screw going through there. And that will secure that to the actual to the actual wall like, like so. With the cable coming probably from the underneath. But it could go from the side or the top. Anyway, let's take that down now, because we don't need to worry about that just yet. That's sort of all you need to know about the back box. And now we'll go to the, the very last piece of the jigsaw puzzle, is the front, part, the front plate plate. Okay, so all we do with this, there's a little lug there to keep the wire away. But that is basically just a push-in. So your connection is this, that's your connection, this square block. And you'll see some metal strips running through them, the block. And inside the socket, it joins to those metal strips there. So there, that's your connection. Now then, so those metal strips there are being fed with the incoming. And when you push this into that, it connects the incoming to the extension wiring. There is something else you need to know on the back of this unit. 
The other thing you need to know, say you wanted to do an extension, say to a study upstairs in the bedroom, and you wanted to just run a, just run your broadband up there. On the back of this, if you see, there's, a, there's another little socket on a hinge with two wires, which is what you use when you want to terminate your A and B. You'll see, if you look very carefully, you'll see A and B. Yeah, A and B. So A and B is to run a cable, yeah, exactly the same as, I'm gonna take this out a minute, let me just take this out. Oh, it's really stiff. Take that out. So this would be a piece of data cable that you'll put in there and you'll crimp, crimp, crimp them down, run it around to the house, run it upstairs, say, into the study, and then you'll terminate a you'll terminate a uh, an internet point on the far end of that. We'll go into that another time. That's why you've got that that outlet just there on the back of this. It's purely to run your broadband through the house to a desired room without having to mess about. Uh, running all around your telephones, your telecoms wiring, okay? Your um, internet is purely for your internet, so if you want to move your router to another room. Anyway, let me put that down. I should put this down as well. Now what you do, you clip them all together. That's your connection now. That'll be on your back box. So in theory, what you have is you have that on the wall like so it's a bit of a bulky telephone point but that's what you've got and that mass that master socket there will filter all of the whole of your property if you've got extensions and it'll keep your it'll keep your internet separated basically from your telephones and it will give you much higher speeds because it's not because it's going through this socket. It's not running all around the house, and then back to this socket. You see, with convent with the old type master socket, which is this one here, you would run it all around the house. So if you've got three sockets around the house, your broadband signal will come out of this socket. It go to the bedroom, then another bedroom then downstairs in the study and then back to here. So it'll be doing a great big loop and you're losing some speed by doing that loop. So I hope this has been um, further educational and that's all there is to it. And then right at the end of play, all you do is you plug your telephone in there if you want a telephone in there and you run your broadband RJ11 in there for your router. And that is it, thank you very much. Please subscribe and also please tick the like button if you like this video. Hope to be doing a much more soon. Thank you.